Hi guys, welcome to our daily encounter. In Psalm 72, we see Solomon as a conscientious king. Uh, this is some requests that he's making of the Lord, of you know what he wanted to have uh, as a part of his rule as he became king. And we know that Solomon was a very conscientious king. That comes out very early in his rule when he was asked by the Lord to ask the Lord anything that he wanted and it would be granted to him. And he asked for wisdom because he wanted to guide the people in the right way. And that same heart is found in Psalm 72. And there's um, some category of things that um, he wanted to be a part of his rule. What did he want his rule to be characterized by? And it's, it's not necessarily... Uh, neatly lined out. Uh, these things are kind of scattered sometimes within the psalm, but we could basically categorize the things that he was asking the Lord of uh, by these seven things. First, justice. He wanted to rule with justice. Uh, he wanted to be there for the widows. He wanted to be there for the poor. He wanted to be for uh, there for those who were being oppressed. He wanted to rule with justice. But he also wanted to rule with righteousness. He wanted to judge in a very righteous way, according to what was right. He also wanted to bring peace to his uh, kingdom. Uh, that's brought out in verse 3, where he says, Let the mountains bring peace to the people and the hills in righteousness. Uh, he wanted to be one who would bring refreshment to the people. And he uses very colorful language to talk about this. He says, May he, that is the king, come down like rain upon the mown grass like showers that water the earth. In his day may the righteous flourish and abundance of peace till the moon is no more. He wanted to be one who was uh, like a refreshing rain or like the dew on the ground. Uh, but he also wanted to be one who, had, who would have a strong rule, who would have a great dominion uh, that would reach very far. He says, may he also rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. A very expansive rule he was asking for there. And then he wanted to be one who would supply his people with a rich supply. Uh, we can see this in verse 16 where he says, uh, May there be abundance of grain in the earth on top of the mountains. Its fruit will wave like the cedars of Lebanon. And may those from the city flourish like the vegetation on the earth. Uh, he wanted to have a very, um, very rich supply of the basic necessities uh, that would be needed for his kingdom. And then an eternal glory in verse 17. May his name endure forever. May his name increase as long as the sun shines and let men bless themselves by him that all nations call him blessed. And so he wanted a his name to be blessed. He wanted a glory to be attached to that name that would last forever and that would endure forever. And so we can look at these things uh, just within the context of Solomon's rule. But there also seems to be some messianic ideas in here as well and as we think about what a wonderful king this would have been um, to be a king that, that uh, is characterized by justice righteousness peace refreshment dominion rich supply and eternal glory of course that would be a great king in connection to solomon but we also see that there seems to be some ties to the messianic king too for one when he talks about uh, that he would rule from the rivers to the ends of the earth uh, we get the idea that that's a little bit more than what Solomon would have had. Solomon had a large kingdom, but to the ends of the earth. And then also about his name enduring forever and things like that, an eternal uh, type of glory also makes us think more in messianic terms as well. And so these things can be applied to a certain degree with Solomon, but they also give us hints to point towards another king, to a king who, while he was on the earth, said that, he was greater than Solomon. A greater than Solomon is here. And we're, of course, we're referring to Jesus Christ. Jesus is the good king who helps us and who has these various characteristics implemented in his own rule as he is the king of this kingdom of heaven that we've come to be a part of. He rules in justice. He's, he's the one who speaks up for the outcasts, for the widows, for the orphans, for the people who are on the fringes of society. Those are the ones who are oftentimes drawn to Christ the most. 
and he and he invites them in to become a part of his family and a part of his kingdom. Uh, he is one, of course, that rules in righteousness and judges uh, rightly. And, and of course, we'll definitely see that fully manifested in the end when he comes to judge all the nations. But even today, as we come to him in prayer, and we want him to consider our situations and our circumstances. We know that he'll judge our circumstances rightly. He is one that brings peace. He's called the Prince of Peace. And he is one that brings uh, peace between man and God, but also as people join themselves to him, peace between each other. Uh, and we see that ultimately, or probably most clearly, in the church. When people are connected to Christ, it brings unity to people and that sort of thing. And refreshment. The Lord is like a refreshing drink. He comes to us and just refreshes our soul. He's like that dew. He's like that rain in the spring. It just refreshes us and renews us. Uh, he is one who has a dominion that does extend to the ends of the earth and is continually expanding and growing all the more. Uh, he is also one who gives us a rich supply. He himself offers himself as the living bread. And he's also the one in John that talks about uh, that he can supply waters in which people will never thirst. So as we connect ourselves to Christ, we are fully supplied spiritually. As we have him as our bread, as he supplies us with the living water, we are richly supplied. And then, of course, he has the eternal glory as well. Um, thousands of years from now, millions of years from now, going on into eternity, Jesus' name will be ever called blessed. And he will be glorified and honored throughout eternity. And his name will be glorified um, forever. So all these things that Solomon would wish for his own kingdom are really fulfilled in the kingdom of Christ. And it's so wonderful and so great that we are able to be a part of this kingdom and be under the rule of such a king. And hopefully, as we read Psalm 72, we'll see that this king that we have, Jesus Christ, he meets all of our needs. And he is one who is for us and not against us. And he will meet our needs and he will uh, be there for us as we submit our lives to him and as we join ourselves to his kingdom. So here's some things we can reflect on and think about as we do our reading today. With that, guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.